How's it going, guys? Tonight, I am going to be ranting about Remnant 2. Now, I know, I know that the game has been out since July 25th of this year, alright? But in all honesty, I can't stop thinking or talking about it to my friends, and I never get to finish my rants. Just so you know, I'm not look. there is no script. None. This is actually based on how I feel about the game, alright? And I'm going to be going to Calgary for the holidays, so I'm going to make this video, I'm going to edit it, I'm going to upload it, and then we'll be good to go. So, anyways, this is a video on why I love Remnant 2, alright? Now, the main reason that I love Remnant 2 is because of everything that Gunfire Games has done for it that have that they've actually done for it okay i every time every time i just have the urge to go on to like my playstation or my computer to play some remnant 2 it is such a good game it's such a good game all right the gameplay he the gameplay the archetypes the gunplay the graphics it's such a good game. And uh, side note for like the gunplay, it, you have to be like very, very precise <laughs> with your aiming. So, and FYI, you don't have to watch this video. I just want to rant about it. I don't, I'm not expecting this video to get anything, to be perfectly honest. I just want to rant about it and get it out of my system to somebody. To somebody, okay? And uh, also, I am going to compare Remnant 2 to other games as well. Probably towards the end of this video. I don't know how long this video is going to be. So let's get right into it. We're going to start out with the archetypes. Alright? We are going to start out with the archetypes for the game. You, At the beginning of the game, you start out with four archetypes in game all right to choose after you go through the tutorial uh the tutorial i guess i could say that it's just a tutorial to get you into the game and to start of the story i'm not going to talk about the story because those likes aren't known for their story they're known for their combat <laughs> and play replayability which remnant 2 has but anyways anyways so to start off, we are going to start off with the four archetypes in the game. Alright, so the first archetype that you have, alright, the first archetype is the medic. You get to choose, like I said, I don't have a script, this is going to probably suck, but oh well. Alright, you start out with four archetypes, I've already said that, fuck. I'm sorry, I just want to rant about the game so bad. <laughs> it's such a good game. Anyways, anyways. This is a lot harder than I thought. You, the game starts you out with four archetypes after you do the campaign. And you had to, you have to go to, after you do the tutorial. Oh my god. I should write a script. I'm not going to do that. But anyways. You start out with four archetypes to choose from, okay? There, you have the medic, who is specialized in, obviously, healing, but he's also kind of specialized in, uh, in having a longer skill, a shorter skill cooldown, I think, I don't remember, god damn. <laughs> but he's known for like his skills being his skills lasting longer he has each archetype has three skills the medic has a uh, healing well healing shield don't mind my eyes and uh redemption healing well obviously drops down a well that well, here healed the area around you, and who's ever in the area. 
uh, will heal with you. And the medic also has the ability for whenever he heals his players a certain amount of time, or not a certain amount of time, sorry, a certain amount of health points, right? He recharge, they get a recharge of their dragon hearts. The dragon hearts are used to heal you. That's it. The relics are used to heal you. They each have their own special ability, but I haven't found them all, considering I have over 160 hours in this game. And that is across both PlayStation and PC. But anyway... <laughs> Whew, this is going to be a fun one, isn't it? Anyways. So you have the... You have the medic. Alright. Hang on. All right, and he and he has a trait called Tyranid. Now, Tyranid allows you to heal your allies and yourself more effectively, so that you can stay in combat longer. Okay, it it goes the same with Redemption and Healing Shield. With Healing Shield, it provides a shield for your allies for ten seconds. It may not sound like a long time, but holy fucking shit, when you're in combat. It feels like a long time, and it, it can help you change the edge of battle a lot. Like, a lot. It changes the battle for you a lot, okay? And then you have redemption. Depending on how long you hold that skill button for, you, you can heal up to 300% of your ally's maximum HP, meaning that if you... If both of you are out, and with redemption as well, it revives your allies around you as well, which is super helpful. Now, there is another class that can actually technically uh, revive your allies and yourself, but if you haven't played the game yet, please, I implore you, play the game. It's so good, and there are a bunch of secret archetypes that you can find. I'll tell you one of the easiest ones you can find, which is the Alchemist. I played the Alchemist. Oh my god. I when I was first playing the alchemist, I wasn't I thought he wasn't that great, but I gave him a shot anyways. Max level, holy fucking shit. Oh, excuse me. Max level with the alchemist, he can uh he can throw a healing potion, a healing thing concoction. I have no idea. I don't remember what it's called. But he can throw it at his down enemy allies, not enemies, allies, and he can also revive allies with that. He can even revive himself, especially in single player, which is really cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's really cool. Okay, with the alchemist, you can find him in Losum, and you have to be and you have to find a rat in the sewers. I'm not going to tell you how. You're going to have to find that out to yourself because it's a bit of a surprise. But anyways. <laughs> and then you have the challenger. You know what? I could just... I'm dumb. I could just do this. I could just launch the game and then just show it to you. I had clips ready, but you know what? It's completely fine. Okay. <laughs> it's completely fine. All right, I'm just, I am just dumb. I just want to make this quality, this video, actual quality. I'm not, I don't want to half-ass it, half-ass my videos anymore when I make videos. I want to actually make good quality content. All right, I actually want to make good quality content. So, I'm going to just put my headphones on because it's fun. But anyways, why can't you see that? Hang on. Wrong thing. <laughs> Here we go. You can't see it. There we go. There. Don't mind this. This is actually just my character. Don't mind the arrows. <laughs> okay. So, you start out. Obviously, character creation. I, I'm just going to skip the tutorial for that. And... And uh, difficulty. So, 
Anyway, you start out playing. You start out playing the game, and after you do the tutorial, you have your four archetypes. Your four beginning archetypes. Stop focusing. Stop. <laughs> okay. You have your four archetypes. You have your medic, who has, like I said, the redemption, two hundred percent max, not three hundred. My bad. All right. The medic unleashes a 30 meter shockwave that revives down allies and restores 50% max health over 10 seconds. For each additional second holding the skill button, the heal gains an additional 50% up to 200%. And which is really nice if you're fighting a boss and if you're playing on hardcore mode especially. All right? And then you have healing shield which I told you about which impl implies a healing shield. For 10 seconds, 25 meters for 100% of their max health. That's good to know. I didn't read the full thing. <laughs> I am such... I love this game. And then heal... And then Wellspring. I thought it was called Healing Well. That's from Remnant from the Ashes. Oh. You know what? I'm just going to add all of this to the video as well because... I just want to. I just want to. Okay. Uh, this is me ranting about Remnant 2, and like I said, you don't have to watch the full video, but I just love this game. I love this game. So, so there is the medic. That's your medic for you. And obviously, they have perks. They have perks, all right? They do. And then, for Remnant 2, you have the hunter. Now, the hunter is your sniper. He is the guy that he is that sits back and shoots from afar. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has and his abilities are hunter masks. Increases the hunter's spatial awareness by casting an aura that automatically applies mark to all enemies within 35 meters. Now, remember, I this is also me explaining why I love Remnant 2. I'm going to tell you the basics of the game. Obviously. But also, I'm going to tell you why I love this game. All right? He has he has the Hunter's Marks, which I told you about. He has Hunter's Focus, which he... I don't know what that does because I never played the Sniper. <laughs> Continuously aiming down sights uninterrupted and without shooting for one second causes the Hunter to enter a Focus state. Ooh! Focused reduces weapon spread, recoil, and sway by 75%? Damn! Grants 25 range and ranged weak spot damage and 10% range crit chance. Oh, while focus aiming at enemies will automatically apply mark. Ooh, that's cool. Focus state can last up to 10 seconds after the skill duration expires. And mark crit uh, chance against marked enemies is increased by 15% for all allies. That's really cool, actually. I didn't know that. <laughs> And then, obviously, Hunter's Shroud. Existing Shroud applies mark to all enemies within 10 meters. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going because I will go on for hours. <laughs> I'm going to go on for hours on time. I'm going to be late for work tomorrow. Shit. <laughs> and then you have the Challenger. Your big, beefy boy. Sorry, hang on. There we go. Your big, be That's the handler. Your big beefy boy, who has who has the stomp attack, which deals 150 damage, and traditional stagger and forward clone up to 7.5 meters. Deals damage to all directions at point blank range. That's nice. That's really nice, actually. And then he has the juggernaut, which he has gaining three stacks of bulwark. Oh, bulwark is, by the way, a ring is an ability or a thing that can make you have more defense. And then he has Rampage. Kills, ooh, enters a heightened state of battle, which increases fire rate by 15%, reload speed by 25%, and, and movement speed. Wait, it increases reload speed? Okay. Kills and dealing significant damage grants one stack of rage. Okay. And then he has Die Hard, which he gets rawr, angry, like Hulk, man. And then you have your handler, 
which is actually really good for single player if you want to, but I'm not going to tell you how you should play the game, and you shouldn't either. If you want to, like, go on to YouTube and, like, see, oh, what is the best build, you can. Personally, I like to explore it myself and choose my own opinion. <laughs> By the way, the handler's dog can actually revive you, which is really cool. And then they added the new archetype with the Awakened King DLC. Fucking love the Awakened King DLC, and I fucking love this archetype called the Ritualist, and I think it's really cool. <laughs> and status effects and pain. I, I honestly think the Ritualist is really cool. Eruption. Creates a one, milli one meter explosion for 50 damage on all enemies within 15 meters. Explosion radius and damage increases to 100% for each unique status effect on the target. Refreshes all current status effects on the target. I love that, by the way. It's so fun. And then this applies all of that status effects on enemies. Which is really fucking cool. And I'm gonna replay through the game again and be the ritualist. <laughs> and then we have Death Wish, which he drains 300% health over 20 seconds and increases all damage by 35 and grants 10% base damage dealt as lifesteal. And then I don't know what this does. The ritualist amplifies and spreads status effects on enemies. Okay? Those are. The archetypes. Alright. And I like to... Th I like how each archetype is completely unique in their own way. The weapons are not unique, but the archetypes themselves are unique. It's so fun. It's such a good thing. Also, as you can see, I have... Like I said, Alchemist. Explorer, you can get them at the... When you complete the game. Which is... Which I'm having a lot of fun. Now, this used to... I turned this into a review as to some gameplay. But that's completely fine. This is why... This is my video and I will say... I'm allowed to do whatever. But still. But I am... I'm sorry. I'm loving this game. And if you look at the graphics... Holy fucking shit. Look at this. Look at this. I know. I've seen this. But every time. This amazes me. Oh! Did the clouds move? Are they moving? Are they moving? I can't tell. They're not moving. Okay, I thought the clouds moved. Damn. <laughs> Zero out of ten. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and now, I'm going to move on to the gunplay of the game. Alright? The gunplay of Remnant 2. Alright. So, I am using the Wrangler 1860 because, why not? But the gunplay of the game is actually really good. I'm going to go to the World Stone here, and I'm going to fight some baddies to show you what I mean. Okay. I guess this is, I guess this is a type of review that is just showing gameplay of the game. Well, I just love the game. I just want to rant about it to people a lot. <laughs> Literally a lot. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Hi, Garfield. So, I'll just cut this out. So, uh, oh, here we go. Okay, next we're going to move on to the gunplay of the game. And each, and then after that, we'll go to that. So, as you can see, with the gunplay, you actually have to be very precise with shooting. Oh, God. Especially with this gun. Actually, that's with any gun, even if it is, ah, shit, see? <laughs> I'll explain that one later.
And I'll also explain that one. Don't you see how good I am at... Ow. Don't you see how good I am at this game? Oh yeah, I am so good. Anyways. I'll even show his graphics from in here as well. Like that, that, that was a new detail to the game. I didn't even know that. Like, okay, that's obviously a glitch. But look at this view here, though. Look at this view, okay? Obviously, I've explored a lot of the Forlorn course. All right, I've explored a lot of it, but that's fine. I'm allowed. <laughs> All right, look at the view. Look at the graphics and the detail of the game. It's so good. And I'm going to get to why I love Remnant 2. Well, you can see why I love Remnant 2. The game itself is fun. The game, the game has such good gameplay to it as well. I missed that one. I shot right behind. Ah, uh, piss off. Sorry, hang on. Eh. Oh, and I leveled up too. Neat. Alright. But what... Oh, okay, cool. He's a... Uh... Now, this is one of the bosses that I also recorded. Because, like I, I was going to say, that each boss themselves is unique. And they are unique. Even if they are, like, weak characters. Weak characters can be a boss. I might actually need to use this. And as you can see with the alchemist, I can actually get myself back up into the fight right away, which I honestly think is really cool. But I think I'm actually gonna die here. Eh. Whoa. Back off! Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Ooh, ow. Okay, that hurt. Ooh, and bonus damage too. Hell yeah. Ah. And then you have, and then you have the music, which is, oh, uh, uh, okay. Well, that's just bullshit. The music is also awesome. Don't you see how good I am at this game? I'm great. Okay, now I'm just straight up focusing. Hang on. Fuck. <laughs> but you can see what I mean by every boss is unique. Those are called aberration bosses, right? They drop the mutators, which I'm going to show you right now. Each mutator is different and unique in their own way. You can equip them on your gun to make them more powerful. For instance, I have, I don't know what this is, dreadful. Increases range damage by 2% for every 10% of total health present as gray health. Well, that's actually really cool. And then Twisted Wounds. Increases range damage of this weapon by 10% to target to bleeding targets. Ooh. That's awesome. Each mutator, like I said, each mutator has their own special ability to make the gun unique. Each gun is already unique. Excuse me, I ate. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, I'm use for this one. I'm using Refunder, which shots from this weapon have a 29% chance to return spent ammo to reserves, giving me a chance to actually fight still, even if I have no ammo, which is really cool. But it's a 29%. You can upgrade these mutators so that you can mm, have a better chance at fighting and a better chance at, let's say, with the Refunder, 
of having more ammos in your reserves. And then with this one, this weapon becomes empowered when stowed for 7 seconds, granting 20% critical chance for 3 seconds. I didn't even know that. Cool. And then the, the supercharger increases charge speed for bows and fusion rifles. Uh, time wave. Mod applies slow status on all enemies. Ooh, I actually didn't know that. I might use that, actually. And then increases this weapon's range by up to 7.5. And then picking up ammo increases range damage for, by 10%. That's also nice. Ammo pickups are added directly to in into this weapon's magazine. I need to upgrade that. Uh, sorry, I, no, I just found out something new. Anyways... So that is the long range weapons. This is with the close range weapons. I like this weapon specifically because I can do this. Which when you take, when you dodge, uh, my mic better be on. Yeah, it is. When, if you just dodge by just pressing the space or the X button, whatever your console you're playing on, A or PC space, PlayStation X, I don't care. Um, whatever button you use, use by standing still, and then you hold down the melee button. That that does special moves. Like for instance, the Dreamcatcher. I like this thing as well because it applies slow to all enemies. If I do this, that's small. But if I could actually get some, if I could destroy something that will actually increase this all right this will increase even if it's not enemies if it's like objects if it's like destructible objects it will do an effect whereas um after dealing 250 damage charge attack will release a dream wave flowing outwards 20 meters and returning to caster dream wave applies slow to all enemies for 10 seconds which is also nice because it also increases your movement speed by 2% and each stack grants 2%, which lasts 15 seconds for you. That's cool. That's awesome. And then you have the flare. <laughs> but anyways. Like, it's amazing. And then, like I said, I'm going to explain the shocker to you, which I don't have a lot of melee I don't have a lot of these as well, but they're all unique in their own way. And I personally love using the shocker because shock damage actually helps a lot. Here, you know what? Let me show you. Actually, if I could get f five hits on an enemy, that's all it takes. It, it, it just takes five hits, which sounds easy, but it's really not. There. And then it does that. And it causes overloaded as well, which is also really nice. And this also has a chance. I, I don't know if that's a bug or not. But it also has a chance to... Uh, it also has a chance... I can't say it. It also has a chance to add a shock status effect if you do this i don't know if this is with any weapon i'm pretty sure it is i don't know and i also think that might be a bug but i honestly i am not complaining um empowers weapon after five hits while empowered the next charge melee hit strikes all damage yeah i have no idea i really don't know Okay, but yeah, each mutator has their own abilities. Increases melee charge speed by 15% and melee attack speed by 10%. That's not bad. That's actually really nice. And then there's increased melee critical chance by 5% when gray health is present. Reduces the stamina guard cost of all charge melee attacks. That's nice. Increases the status effect damage applied by melee attacks and melee hits increase melee damage by 3% for 10, 10 seconds. 10 seconds! And then there's transference, and then you have 
Vengeful Strike. Like, each, each, each weapon is unique. I'm not going to go over the rings because there are so many. You can see right here, I have so many rings. You can tell I've been playing a lot of Remnant 2. And then, again, I'm not going to go over the amulets as well. You, If you want to get the game, go right ahead. Seriously. Seriously, it's such a fun game. I guarantee you will have fun. The only problem I have with the game is the frame drops on PC and PlayStation. But other than that, it's not a bad game. I'm just going to do balance and then... Even with balance, it, it, it still has frame drops. But that's my only complaint. Although I have noticed some glitches, whereas enemies tend to be in the floor sometimes. So I don't. I think that's only in the Awakened King. I am now going to move on to the characters of Remnant 2. Because just so you know, the characters in Remnant 2 are more memorable than the blacksmiths in Diablo 4. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna skip past this. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Alright, you have all of these characters. Some of these characters don't even do stories, they are just NPCs. That one, I forgot his name. <laughs> I literally, but he's such a memorable character. He's from a planet, he's from a realm called Yesha. Alright, and by the way, each world in this game has their own story to it. It's all tied to the main story, just not a lot. It's just that each world has their own story to the game. Yeah. Whereas your main objective is to stop the root, just kill these big, bad, evil guys in each world and uh, try to open a world to root earth. I think his name is called Dwell. D Dwell? Uh, see, even that's memorable and I forgot. <laughs> This guy can upgrade your relics. Well, not relics. Sorry. Not your relic charges. He, this guy can craft you muta mutators, and he can craft you red relic fra He can craft you relic fragments that will help you along your way. He can also help you upgrade your mutators as well. Speaking of which, I'm just going to... um. Oh, where is it? Excuse me. Hang on. There you are. Just gonna upgrade this. And there we go, that's upgraded, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, so he can upgrade your, your relics and mutators. Whereas for relic charges, I was gonna talk about the traits, but if you guys do decide to pick up the game, go right ahead. This is not sponsored, by the way. I just want to talk about why I love Remnant 2. This is Wallace. He is the guy that you actually go up to to get your archetype. The four archetypes I told you about. What is he doing? Okay. And he can upgrade. There's eight charges? What? Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought there was only seven. Apparently, you can upgrade this up. Eight? Ooh, I didn't even know that. This guy can upgrade your relic charges and he can also help you with getting the archetypes. As you, I will show you my archetypes right now is that I have a bunch of them. <laughs> I have 10 archetypes. I have all but one archetype. I am not going to tell you the names of these. You know what? You're going to look it up anyways. There's the medic. The, there's, there's the medic. The uh, challenger, the hunter, and the handler. All right. And then you have the engineer. These are the secret archetypes. This is also a secret archetype. But anyways, you have the engineer, which he has a turret, which is really nice. The alchemist, which I've already shown you. The uh, summoner, who can summon... Uh, root to help fight for you, actually. 
and you have the invader which he can actually get behind enemies and also has an ability whereas you can cast an ability and like just dodge perfectly but it also has a penalty for that i will tell that in a later video or live stream i might live stream this when i get back you have the gunslinger which by the way you can if you did pre-order the game, you could actually unlock him. It's just a little thank you to the player for pre-ordering the game. And then, like I said, there's the Ritualist. Now, I'm just going to switch over to the Ritualist on PC real quick. Because, god damn, it's fun. God damn. Like, it's really cool. I'm just, I just want to, I just want to show the Ritualist real quick here. Alright. I wasn't expecting to play this, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> I was going to play this after the video, but I do actually have to go to bed to go to work. So, By the time I'm making this video, I'm also uploading this video tonight. Some edited. Okay, so the Ritualist focuses on status effect damage. And I like this because, look. See, they have status effect. That doesn't look like a lot of damage, but god damn it pushes them back a tiny bit and it stuns them a tiny bit and that actually does help a lot. Even if it's oops. Even if it's just a little bit, it helps a lot. Gonna go back to explore here. There we go. It does help a lot and you and again if any, even the tiniest thing that doesn't do a lot in this game helps a lot. Like, seriously. I'm, I am going all over the place. Remember, I, am, I don't have a script for this because I'm not smart. Anyways, we're going to go on to the modifications now. These are all my mods that I currently have. I don't have a lot, but I know there's more. Okay, you can get Astral Burst, which pushes enemies back, and also Dealing, which, well, wait, no, no, it doesn't. Fires a short-range burst of seven star fragments, which deals 35 damage each. Fragments bounce off walls up to 3%, three times, dealing 35% additional damage per bounce. That's cool. And then you have these, which is basically get over here from Mortal Kombat. And then you have this, fires a drill projector, which bores into enemies on contact, dealing 80 damage. After fully burying into an enemy, creates a weak spot, which grants 50% of normal weak spot damage on hit. If attached to an existing weak spot range crit, chance is increased by 15%. And then you have concussive shift shots, which pushes enemies back and then you have this in fact infects weapons with malware for 30 seconds causing shots to apply fragmented for five seconds and then you have fargazer which firestorm which by the way you can pause if you want to look at this healing shot sorry there you go helix hot shot which is one of the first mods you can get and it's such a good mod I'm not gonna lie. Prismatic drive fires a superheated beam. It's just basically a beam rifle mod. Shoots tentacles out of your gun and uh, plants them and attacks enemies for you. Rotted arrow does that. Scrap shot does that. Does that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, does that. Does that. Stasis beam is like this. Yeah, time lapse, which you saw me use, that stopped enemies for seven seconds. And it applies slow to them when, if I do damage to them. Uh, and then there's Tremor, uh, well, like, Voltaic Ronder, which does shock damage, and Witchfire. Now, like I said before, next are the characters that actually help you along the way. So you have Dwell, Wallace, you have these two guys, which, by the way, 
I can tell you I remember the names because I looked at them. But I still remember them. Which is Riggs. You have McCabe here who does actually help you turn the bosses into weapons after you've defeated them. Freaking cool. This guy upgrades your guns. And you can also downgrade them to get your materials back to upgrade guns later. You have Cass here who is a new character from from Remnant 2, the tutorial character. Uh, you have Riggs and Mudtooth. These guys, I, not Riggs, sorry. Reggie, this guy is Reggie. We all like Reggie. And Mudtooth. Mudtooth is a great character, by the way. I implore you to listen to his stories. It's funny, and that's how you get the gunslinger. Okay? And you have Whispers here, who gives, who gives you armor. Each armor is good for different things, like defense and weight. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Which is why I'm wearing light. And you have Dr. Nora here. Alright. All, all of the characters that help you along the way to try to kill the root in this game are very memorable. What's over here? Oh, okay. Nothing. Alright. Okay, these characters are all memorable. And now I am going to get to the part on why I love Remnant 2. Well, you already can see that I love this game. I love this game a lot. This game is such a good game. Okay. Now, the only reason... the the main, the true reason that I love this game is the fact of how much the, um, how much Gunfire Games has put so much effort into Remnant 2. Now, if you, if you buy the Ultimate Edition for the game, okay, if you buy the Ultimate Edition for the game, you get three free DLC packs, which are going to be coming out later next year in... A few in a few, couple years. I don't know when. All right. All right. You also get another uh, add-on to the game, which is the survivor pack, which gives you a thousand. Uh, I think a thousand. Yeah, survive survival pack, which gives you like a thousand scrap, ten iron, and two uh, experience boost. Which, FYI. I thought the experience boost things was only through that. You can actually buy them from Mudtooth later on in the game, which I find awesome. I find that awesome that that's a thing. So I'm really happy about that and I can go all out. <laughs> okay. Now, this one is going to break my heart a little bit because it does this part does break my heart because like remnant 2 the, I, I love remnant 2 because the gameplay feels so great the game itself is amazing and i literally cannot stop playing it i have 70 hours now i for the past three days i had put i played 24.6 hours in the last two weeks that's what it says on my steam right now because i genuinely love this game all right it's the same thing with undertale i love undertale but the thing is is that i don't know why but i can't stop playing remnant 2 it's because the game but i think i know why it's because the game feels so unique every time you restart playing the game Every time when you come across a new encounter, it just feels fun. It's so fun. Oh, excuse me. Okay. But this is what breaks my heart about Remnant 2. Not about Remnant 2. About the gaming industry in general. You notice how I made that comment about the blacksmiths in Diablo 4? I can't even remember Diablo 4's story. Okay. It's because of, like, the greedy companies of Blizzard or Act an Act Blizzard, Activision. Like, each game has microtransactions now, and it's not, and that's not good at all. 
Well, okay, people want the microtransactions. I can understand that. They they don't mind it. But if you look at the games now, like from big, big companies, not not uh, from Soft that made Elden Ring. I love Elden Ring as well, but but not like from software with Elden Ring, but like with um like uh EA with Battlefield 2042, Activision with Call of, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, um fucking Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite, they actually stayed need to 343 actually stayed with Halo Infinite to fix it completely and I love that. I'm playing Halo Infinite again and I'm having a blast. But it's because of the microtransactions because there aren't a lot of games that release anymore that just let you have fun. With Remnant 2, you don't actually have to buy like the deluxe not the deluxe, the ultimate edition to like uh, get all of these fancy things. You can literally earn all of these in-game. The support from you buying the game is enough. They have sold over 2 million copies. Again, this is not a sponsor. I just love Remnant 2. Okay? And the game... But anyways, the game just feels great. The gameplay feels amazing. Like, you can even tell that I was having fun playing Remnant 2 even after, like, I was playing it. You could see that I was having fun, even when I died from the boss, which I know, I suck at the game. I need to get good. But when I died from the boss, or the aberration, um, I had fun. I had fun. And you could see me smiling, looking at the game, because it doesn't make you feel like you're forced to do this it doesn't make you feel like that you have to buy something to continue all right i know you have to buy the awakened king to get the ritualist but it's only like 12 bucks it's it's like 13 bucks in canada it's 10 bucks in the u.s if you are in the u.s okay which is fine that's cheap i got the i got the awakened king for free because i bought the ultimate edition because i couldn't help myself from buying remnant 2 again and i just love the developers for making this game <laughs> okay but with but with like the huge companies like with blizzard with diablo f diablo 4 sorry i like blizzard with diablo 4 they they released diablo 4 with for like 89.99 okay and i was honestly excited for diablo 4 I was excited for Diablo 4 because I love Diablo. I grew up playing <laughs> enough. I'm just looking at the reviews for Diablo 4 now. <laughs> and then you but then you have some of the big companies that actually do do well with their games that like with Larian with Baldur's Gate 3. I love Baldur's Gate 3. That's fun. Uh there's uh, there's also, like, indie game developers with Valheim. I'm pretty sure Valheim is an indie game, isn't it? I can't remember for the life of me. Yeah, Valheim. And... It is an indie game. Valheim is an indie game. It's the same with Deep Rock Galactic or Stardew Valley. And then you have, again, you have the bigger companies that go for the microtransactions like 343 Activision Blizzard Ubisoft um fucking Bungie okay but with Remnant 2 I actually genuinely have fun with it and again I'm having fun with Halo Infinite as well no no hate towards any of the game companies except Blizzard they don't get enough of it <laughs> right now anyways but um it's just i love remnant 2 because of how fun it is i know it, i know i'm going back i know i'm going back to like how fun it is 
But honestly, that's how I feel. That's how I genuinely feel about Remnant 2, is that I just have so much fun with it. If I'm on my own, or if I'm playing with my friends, or with my brother and friends, like, I have fun regardless because of the gameplay, the the story, not that great. But I, I at least remember the story from Remnant 2. <laughs> okay. And then you have, like, again, I'm sorry. And, like, this... And with games that... It, the game doesn't have to be monetized to be good. It doesn't have to have a battle pass to be good. I know Deep Rock Galactic, that does technically have a battle, battle pass, but it's not monetized. They actually genuinely care about their community, which is why with indie games, people love them so much is because they care about the community. I know Remnant 2... Is not an indie game, actually. It is considered a double A game. Okay? A double A game. And how many people worked on Remnant 2? How many how many how many how many people 90 people worked on this game 90 which sounds like a lot okay 90 people worked on remnant 2 that's that's that doesn't that sounds like a lot and be like oh oh they should fix the frame rate issues i agree they should fix the frame rate issues but right now they're on holidays <laughs> okay but do you want but the thing is is that the fact that 90 people were able to make the game work and be fun to play, even with the frame drops, obviously, fr frame drops, geez, geez, it happens. It's because of how graphically intense the game is, even with the 4090s. It's not always the 40, it's not always the graphics card that does it for you. The CPU also has to work with the graphics card. I was running 50 frames on it, but that's because of my quality settings and because of my CPU <laughs> and graphics card. All right, but if you look at, but again, Remnant 2 had roughly 90 people working on it, which is cool because the game is fun. It's great, except Narud. Narud sucks. I do not like Narud. I'm kidding. <laughs> I love every aspect of, the, of this game. Every death that I had in the game, like the combat, the abilities that you can have, it's just fun, okay? And now if you look at Activision, how many people worked on Modern Warfare 3 2023? You see, it doesn't even say. No, I remember this. I was talking to my friend Dawson about this. Okay, they had seven studios working for them. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> and then with Halo Infinite, they had like 1,200 people working, 1,223 or something, I don't know, working for them, which is understandable. They didn't know how to use the split, slip space engine, but now they do for Halo Infinite, and I'm glad they're fixing Halo Infinite. I know this went on, on a rant, about other companies, but I generally think Remnant 2 is fun, and I think you guys should try it out as well. And also, I am gonna head off now. Thank you uh, everyone so much for locking. Locking? Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you like this video, and if you agree with me, hit like. I don't care, don't hit like, I don't care. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to rant to people about Remnant 2. All right. I do. I just wanted to rant to people about Remnant 2. And I think it should deserve more recognition than it does now. By more people. Seriously, by more people. I know this had the game sold like 2 million units, but I want more people to play Remnant 2. It is such a good game. Seriously. Like it and if you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to like the same game I do. But seriously, I love this game. And I've been and I've been wanting to talk about Remnant 2 for a while. 
and it's just so much fun. I just, the combat is so fun. The voice acting is not great, except with Ford and the other characters. Those other characters do so well with the voice acting. The fucking Ravengers voice acting. Oh my god, it's so good. The fucking guy from Nerud, when both of them actually have really good voice acting. And the graphics, again, are just so good. And if you are playing it on PC and you set for potato mode, the graphics still look... Actually, you know what? Let me show you real quick. Let me show you before I go. Before I go. Let me show you the graphics in potato mode. It's still really good, and I think that's impressive. And they managed to do that and keep the graphics good. It's just insanity. I'm not putting my headphones on because I'm not going into combat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. But seriously, I implore you to play Remnant 2. And when I get off work tomorrow, I am just going to straight up play Remnant 2. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, I am still taking a break off of social media. Well, I'm not going to be like uploading or stuff. And I'm going, like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm going to Calgary to visit with family. Okay, so this is the game on high qualities, okay? Let me set it to Ultra. It looks fucking amazing. Like, look at that detail. Look at it. Look at that detail. Uh, there's some low res stuff, but look at that detail. It's amazing. Okay, now I'm going to set it to potato mode. And my computer is yelling at me. <laughs> this is potato mode. Alright. Now, I know that the textures... Look at that! Look at the texture. Look at the details. Look at that. I am... I just have so much fun with this game. Potato mode... Like, even with potato mode, it looks good. I know it's bright because there's no shadows... But it just honestly looks good. I, if, if you guys are like, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but in all honesty, this looks really good still, even with potato mode. But anyways, that is the end of this video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you guys want more content like this in the future. I'm probably never gonna do this type of content again because it hurt my brain. I'm just gonna go back to playing video games and just having fun, okay? So I will see you guys in the next video and or live stream, okay? And when I get back, I'm probably gonna live stream Remnant 2 and just have fun with it. So anyways, you guys have a good rest of your day or night, wherever you are. Have a good one, guys. Have a good, have a good one.